Okay, in this video we're going to talk about finding the formula for the nth term of an arithmetic sequence. And uh, to do that we need to know what an arithmetic sequence is. So an arithmetic sequence typically um, is written in the following form. So it's a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus d times the quantity n minus 1. So an arithmetic sequence is really a sequence of numbers in which consecutive terms have a constant difference. So to get from one term to the next, you will always add the same number or subtract the same number. And uh, because that's what you're doing, you're always moving uh, from term to term, you're always uh, increasing the term number by one, and you're always changing the term by a fixed amount. They're actually just um, linear equations. So let's look at what's happening. So a sub n is actually the nth term. Um, and that's kind of like the value that your line would spit out if you were looking at it as a line, like you plug in a value for n and then you get a value out of it, that's the nth term. And a sub 1 is the first term of the sequence, and then d is the common difference. So that's, um, you know, you would add always add that to get to the next term, or you'd always subtract it to get to the next term, depending if it's positive or negative. And uh, because of the way it's all set up, and as I've already mentioned, it's actually just a line. And since it's just a line, everything you know about writing equations of the line still applies to this. And if you look at it as a line, you'll notice that d is actually the slope of the line. So since d is just the slope of the line, and you know, if you know any two terms of the sequence, you know the term number and the term itself, um, we can find the value of d by calculating the slope. So it'll look like d is equal to a sub m minus a sub n over m minus n. We're going to do examples, so that'll make uh, more sense, hopefully, at the end. And because you can treat it as a line, you can actually um, generalize this. So the formula that I've written so far is the formula you'll find in almost every book. But um, since uh, you can use any points on a line to write the equation of the line if you know point-slope form, we can really write, write this as a sub n is equal to a sub m plus d times the quantity n minus m. It's really important that the m's match up. So if you're using the 53rd term, you're going to have the quantity n minus 53 uh, when you write your formula. But um, that's a very general form, and that's the form we're actually going to end up using on one of the problems. And uh, really use it on a lot of problems, because you need to figure out the first term if you're not given the first term. So let's do some examples and see if this makes sense. So if we are given uh, a sub 1 is 12 and a sub 2 is 17, or the first two terms of an arithmetic sequence, let's see if we can write the uh, formula for this, or a formula, because you can actually write as many as you want. Um, so the first thing I need to calculate is d. So d is going to be a sub 2 minus a sub 1 over 2 minus 1, which in this case is just uh, 17 minus 12 is 5 over 1, so 5. And since I know the first term, I'm just going to jump in and write a sub n is equal to um, so it should be the first term plus d times the quantity n minus 1. So a sub n is 12 plus 5 the quantity n minus 1. And that's it. So let's take a look at another example. So we have a sub 1 is 15 and a sub 12 is 49. So instead of knowing consecutive terms this time, we know the first term and the twelfth term. But we still just have to calculate d. So d is going to be... So it's a sub 12 minus a sub 1 over 12 minus 1. And if we plug in, we have 49 minus 15 over 11. So that's going to be 34 over 11 is the value of d. We already know the first term, so we can just plug right in and get a sub n is the first term, which is 15, plus the common difference, so 34 over 11, and then the quantity n minus 1, and we're done. So we're going to look at one more example, because really these aren't uh, super complicated. So we'll do one more example, and then the video will be over. So say we know the 8th term and the 16th term of the sequence. So this is very different. We don't know the first term. So it doesn't change what we do, though. We first just calculate d, the common difference. So we use the idea of slope. So it's going to be a sub 16 minus a sub 8 over 16 minus 8, which in this case is 8 minus 54 over 8. And that is negative 46 over 8, which is negative 23 over 4. So now we know d. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write um, a general form of the uh, nth term. So the nth term, um, since we're treating it like a line, the nth term is going to be a sub 8 plus d times the quantity n minus 8. So make sure those 8s match up. 
And if I plug in, I get a sub n is uh, 54 minus 23 over 4 times the quantity n minus 8. And actually, if I didn't have to write this in terms of the first term of the sequence, I would be done there. Um, and I could have chosen the other value that I know, a sub 16 being 8. So if I did that, I would have a sub n is a sub 16 plus d times the quantity n minus 16. And when I plug in, I get a sub n is 8 minus 23 over 4 the quantity n minus 16. And I could have been done there. So if I wanted to write this in terms of the first term of the sequence, I need to figure out the first term of the sequence. The, the whole idea here is no matter which of these I use, I'm going to get the same value. So a sub 1 should be 54 minus 23 over 4 times negative 7, which gives me 377 over 4. If I use the other formula, a sub 1 should be 8 minus 23 over 4 times negative 15, which also gives me 377 over 4. So I actually know a sub 1 is definitely 377 over 4, and I confirm that I got both of those formulas right by doing that. So I could, in terms of the first term of the sequence, write that a sub n is 377 over 4 minus 23 over 4 times the quantity n minus 1, and uh, that's how they work. So I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.